Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about the volatile keyword in C. Hey everybody, today I wanna to talk about volatile, which is a keyword in C that has struck many beginning programmers with fear because let's face it, when you're first starting out with programming, the last thing you wanna see in source code is the word volatile. New programmers often feel like they're dealing with a really stubborn alien life form that has a mind of its own. And so having a reminder in there like volatile, just it's not helping. But seriously, there's no reason to fret about these volatile variables because right now we're gonna get you sorted out. And let's do that with a few examples. But before I begin, a quick disclaimer. So the things I'm about to show you are very specific to compilers and machines. These examples may work on my machine one way and they may work on yours in a different way. I make no guarantees. We might even say that your results may be a little bit volatile. Also, my examples today involve threads and signals. I have done videos on threads and signals in the past. I will link to those in the description. If you're not familiar with either of these, you might wanna go watch those videos first and then come back and finish this one. It might make everything make more sense. But the example I'm gonna to use today is super simple. I'm just gonna create a new thread and that thread is going to wait for a second and then it's gonna set a shared variable called done to true. Okay, now the main thread down here simply waits and it's just gonna wait, it's gonna spin in this while loop until done becomes true and then it's going to exit the program. Seems pretty straightforward. Real programs will of course be more complicated but this will illustrate how volatile works. So first, let's take a moment and think about how this is going to run. Any freshman computer science student will tell you that it's going to print out waiting, wait for a second until the thread changes the variable, and then print OK moving on, right? Well, let's see. If I compile the program and run it, then things look pretty normal, just as we expected. But for the sake of completeness, let's now turn on compiler optimizations. I also have a video on that in case you're curious what this is. But if I turn on compiler optimizations, this is just trying to make the code faster. And now we compile it and we run it and... Wait a minute, now it doesn't work. What just happened? It's like some of my code disappeared. Hey compiler, you were supposed to make my code faster. You're not supposed to break it. What's happening here is this. The compiler looked at this while loop, noticed that done is never updated in the loop, and it said, you know, I could save Jacob a lot of time and just replace this code with while true. Because if you just look at main, if you just look very closely locally at main right here, the two will have the same effect. If we can only see main, then there's no evidence that done will ever change. And so the compiler doesn't realize that there's this other thread out here that modifies my global variable. And so it changes the code for us and it breaks our program. Okay, so what do we do about it? Before I show you the right way to fix it, I also wanna show you something interesting that I noticed. Say I change the code and add a sleep into the while loop. Well, based on what we've seen so far, this should have the same problems. But if I compile it and run it, you notice that it doesn't. As far as I can tell, the compiler sees this sleep and it says, you know, I'll bet this code is waiting for something to happen. So I'm going to actually check the variable. I'm not going to optimize it out. And to me, this is a little unsettling. The correctness of our program is currently at the whim of the compiler and at the set of heuristics that it's using to optimize our code. And that's scary because a different compiler might have different heuristics. It might be broken in both cases or work correctly in both cases. And so adding a sleep here is definitely not the way we wanna fix this problem. And this is where volatile comes into play. So if we go up here where we declared the variable and we make it volatile, and now it works fine again, even with optimizations. What I'm doing is this tells the compiler that the variable can change in ways that might not be apparent to the compiler. And that might be in another thread, it might be in a signal handler, it might be an interrupt service routine. And in fact, let's try it with a signal handler, almost the same code as before, but we won't use a thread. Instead, we'll just have the loop in main wait for the user to hit control C, which sends a signal to our process. So in the signal handler, that is the function that gets called when the signal arrives, I'm gonna set the done variable. So in this example, just like when we were dealing with threads, if I compile it and run it, it works fine. I turn on optimizations and run it and it breaks. And then I make the variable volatile and now it works fine again, even with optimizations. And the point is when we make the variable volatile, we're saying to the compiler, please don't make any assumptions about when this variable can change. It's a crazy variable. It has a mind of its own. It could change in threads or signal handlers or interrupt service routines. Just don't make any assumptions about it. Whatever you do, please don't optimize it out. So that's the basic gist of the volatile keyword. Now I wanna just add some nuance, make things a little more complicated because you can declare a volatile int. That's what we've done so far, just like this. You can also declare a pointer to a volatile int. So the pointer is not volatile, but the int the pointer points to is considered volatile. You can declare a volatile pointer to an int. This is the opposite case where the pointer is the volatile one, it means the address can change, but the integer it points to is not considered volatile. It's just a regular int. And of course, you know you saw this coming, you can have a volatile pointer to a volatile int. And now both the int and the pointer that points to that int are both considered volatile 
by the compiler. And of course, this works with types that are not integers. It works with floats and doubles and structs and anything. You can make members of structs volatile. You can also make the entire struct volatile, which is just like making all of the members of the struct volatile. And at this point, some of you may be wondering, hey, volatile seems like a safe thing to add. It keeps the compiler from doing crazy stuff that breaks my code. Why don't I just stick volatile in front of every one of my variable declarations? And before you do this, I just wanna add just a little word of caution. I don't recommend this for two reasons. The first is that it's, of course, gonna make your code slower. Compiler optimizations are here for a reason. They're here to actually make your code more efficient, make it run better. And by indiscriminately sprinkling volatile throughout your code, you lose that benefit. The more important reason, though, is you're going to confuse people that look at your code, including maybe yourself. When I'm looking at code and I see the word volatile in there, a red flag goes up that says, hey, there's something different about this variable. It's different. It may be handled in a, in a thread or a service routine. Something strange is happening with, with this variable and I need to be aware of what it is. If I start looking at your program and every variable is declared volatile, then I'm either thinking this is the weirdest program I've ever seen where every variable is volatile or I lose the ability to actually get insight into the program or how these variables are actually being used. And in either case, you confuse me as a reader if you just use volatile when it doesn't make sense. So I leave that up to you. Maybe you don't care about the speed. I hope you care about confusing people that read your code. But that's it for today. I had a bunch of you ask about volatile. I hope this clears it up. I hope it's now clear what volatile does and how to use it in your programs to make sure you get predictable behavior and correct behavior even when you turn on compiler optimizations and even when you're dealing with interrupt service routines. And until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>